Like Illustrator, Photoshop is an obvious choice as an application to generate assets for your editing in Premiere Pro and your post-production work in After Effects. It's a powerful tool and allows you to produce complex layered images with 3D and animation now and even to work on video directly. If you're new to video editing but you know Photoshop very well, there's no reason why you can't use this application to generate titles and graphics. If you go to the File menu and choose New, you've got the option of choosing a number of presets, including film and video. And in those presets, you can choose a particular size. Now, I'm working with media that is 1280 by 720, so I'm going to choose this HDV stroke HDTV option. And you'll notice that when I choose these options, there's actually a frame rate listed as well. Don't worry too much about that frame rate. It's something you can change very easily later on in the animation panel. Here, right away, you can see I've got a width and a height. The pixels per inch isn't particularly important, but the color mode is. Of course, Photoshop supports quite a lot of different color modes. We're going to want RGB because that's the native color mode for Premiere Pro. We've also got the option of choosing whether we're going to work in 8-bit, 1632, or whatever. It's up to you, really. 8-bit is fine. That's what most standard video is. But if you really want to max out the quality, you can go for 32-bit. I suppose at least it's going to fit in with the 32-bit floating point processing possible inside of Premiere Pro. In all likelihood, you're going to want a transparent background rather than a particular color or white because then you can use that transparency as part of your composition inside of Premiere Pro. We also have the option to manage color for the document, and this is exactly the same as any other kind of file. You might find it useful to set up the color management to display as something like this HDTV. This is the ITUC 709 color, so you've got 0-255 to 255 color here, or 16-235 to 235 color, which is the YUV color scale here. This is the 16-235 option. This is for standard definition. And of course, you've got all these different kinds of film types as well, different kinds of film stock. If you do choose one of these, then you'll want to go to the view menu once you're into the file and turn on the proof colors. That way, if you've got a profile for your monitor, Photoshop can give you an impression at least of how the colors are going to be displayed on your chosen monitor. I might as well choose that color profile. I want square pixels, of course, because I'm working on an HD format that has square pixels. If you're working on a standard definition format, you'll want non-square pixels. And I'm going to click OK. And here I am in my Photoshop document. And when you create a Photoshop document this way, Photoshop automatically gives you, they're quite faint, but it gives you the 10% and 20% safe action and safe title zone guides. These guides don't appear in the image. If I press Control or Command H, they're going to disappear from view. They're just there to help you lay out the contents of your graphics. The great thing about Photoshop being made by Adobe is that Adobe also make After Effects and Premiere Pro. So the compatibility between those applications is particularly good. I'd recommend having as many layers as you like. Here, for example, uh, maybe I'll just make a simple gradient on the screen. In fact, let me make a little marquee selection. I'm going to do a simple strap line here. And I'll just fill that selection with you know, this gradient will probably do. So I'm just going to put some color across the screen. Then I'll just uh, click to add some text. Let's call this uh, race report. That's kind of small. So I'll just select that and click and drag on the text here to increase the size. So I'm not going to go for any wonderful uh, artistry here, but you can see on my layers panel, I've got two layers here. And the great thing is that I can work with those independently when I'm in After Effects or Premiere Pro. Up under the view menu here, I've got, uh, let me just confirm that text. I've got this option to specify my proof setup, which by default is going to be working CMYK. But if I go up to custom, I can choose a specific device to simulate. And that includes things like, for example, a regular standard definition or high definition TV. So I can select that, click OK. And now under my view menu, I can turn off and on 
proof colors. Now, you may not see much difference, but it's dependent on your computer monitor being set up with a proper profile that Photoshop can read and identify and compensate for. But at least you've got that option, which is pretty powerful in your graphics editor. There's nothing you especially need to do to your Photoshop documents to make them compatible with Premiere Pro or After Effects. And things like layer effects are supported. So if you do apply something like uh, maybe an outer glow to your text, let's uh, spread that out a bit. Okay, that looks suitably unsubtle. <laughs> Click OK. That'll turn up as well and be displayed in your editing application. So you really do have all of the flexibility that Photoshop has to offer when you're creating these files. And you don't have to make the images perfectly correct for your timeline, as long as they fit. As with all rasterized graphics, it's a good idea to go bigger than you need rather than smaller and then increase the scale because things will start to look a little bit blocky. And if you want to make the image size selection super easy, if I toggle back over to Premiere Pro here, under the file menu, I can choose to go to New and choose Photoshop File. And if I click on this, it's automatically going to show me the resolution and time base for my current sequence I've got right here. So if I click OK, this is going to ask me where I want to put the file. Let's put this with our other footage. Let's um, have this under Graphics. Photoshop from PR, from Premiere. And then here we are, we're looking at an image that's exactly right for our current sequence. And I'm a big fan of technologies that work this way, where I know it's correct, I just don't really need to know what it is. It's automatically been selected for me. Over in After Effects, I have a very similar option. Here's a project with a composition. I can go to the File menu and choose New and choose Adobe Photoshop file. I get exactly the same options. Let's go to our Media Assets and Graphics, and let's say uh, PS from AE. And there we go again. I've got a graphic file ready to be created. It's a PSD based on the dimensions of my composition. So again, it just makes it super easy for you to get exactly the right settings without you understanding what they should be. Pretty much anything you can do in Photoshop, you can bring into those other applications. Worst case scenario, you'll go to the file menu if you're working on animated content, you'll choose export, render video, and then you can use the presets in the Adobe Media Encoder to create a video clip that you can import like any other into Premiere Pro or After Effects. So that's preparing images for video in Photoshop CS6.